Before you commit to buying four fast prime lenses, get outside with a $200 camera and a cheap zoom lens. This combination, when used properly, will make you a better photographer than committing to loads of prime lenses too early. Prime lenses are almost always of a higher quality with faster apertures. But before you waste all your money and buy four fast prime lenses, I'm going to show you how to get all that performance out of one cheap zoom lens so that you can then find the right prime focal length for your style of street photography. If you were to purchase each of the prime lenses that we're going to talk about in this video, you would spend this amount of money depending on the lens that you're using on the used market. Before you commit to such a big decision, I want to show you the more cost effective way to find the right prime lens for the exact style you enjoy shooting. When doing this, it's important to remember not to treat your zoom lens like a zoom lens. What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> Don't just zoom your way out of the problem. Instead, we're going to treat it like four individual prime lenses so we can find the right focal length for you. The specific lens that I have here is for micro four thirds mount. And this is a zoom lens that goes from 14 millimeters up to 42 millimeters. Now that 14 to 42 millimeter zoom range is in micro four thirds terms, which has a crop factor of two compared to full frame field of view. So a 14 millimeter is a 28, an 18 millimeter is a 36, a 25 millimeter is a 50, a 35 millimeter is a 70 and a 42 millimeter is an 84. Two other important things about this lens are one, it has a variable aperture, which means at its widest 14 millimeter focal length, it has a 3.5 aperture and at its longest 42 millimeter focal length, it has a 5.6 aperture. And the second thing to note about this lens is that it has built-in image stabilization, which when paired with the in-body image stabilization on the GX7 makes them for a nice stabilized setup when shooting at slower shutter speeds. Now, regardless of the camera system and zoom lens that you have, you likely have a lens that covers you from somewhere around 24 millimeter full frame or 28 millimeter full frame up to 70 full frame or 85 full frame. I wanna show you this giraffe. Sorry, no, graph, I meant graph. Hang on, this is technically a chart. I wanna show you this chart. Here we have the four main prime lens focal lengths with their respective crop factors on different lens mounts. So pay attention to where your camera brand is, the name of its lens mount and the crop factor and the specific focal length that gives you the full frame field of view. If you're new to photography, I know crop factors and focal length can be a bit complicated. The reason why I mentioned full frame field of view is just because that's more the universal measurement that we can all go by rather than trying to compare micro four thirds to APS-C and then to full frame. It's easier just to go by 35 millimeter full frame field of view and then work out the crop factor on each of the other sensor formats. I'd like to reiterate that in this video, we're not going to treat our zoom lens like a zoom lens. What do you mean? And by that I mean, if I'm at 14, which is 28 for me, and I see a subject that's far away, I don't wanna just go boom, up to 85. Instead, I wanna stay down at 28 and I wanna actually use my legs to get closer and find an interesting shot. So for each of the focal lengths we're gonna to go to here, we're gonna try and treat them like prime lenses without committing to buying four individual primes. We can do all of this with just a cheap kit lens before you commit to buying an expensive fast prime. Starting wide on my particular lens, which is a micro four thirds lens, I'm at 14 millimeters, which is our full frame field of view equivalent to 28 millimeters. This is typically a standard wide lens for street photography, but often for many new street photographers, this feels far too wide to get anything useful. 28 millimeters is widely regarded as the pure form of street photography, including as much as possible into a scene and probably the most challenging form of street photography. The images you'll see from 28mm street photographers often incorporate a lot more action and many more subjects giving a nice and wide field of view. And there's a few cameras out there that come with a 28mm fixed focal length, such as the Ricoh GR series or the Leica Q series. One problem you might find when you start shooting with 28mm is just how wide your focal length actually is and you might find yourself having to get much closer to subjects in order to fill the frame. Moving a little tighter now, on my lens this is going to be at 18 millimeters and that's going to give us a full frame equivalent field of view of 36 millimeters. We're going to call this a 35 millimeters but this particular lens is one millimeter away. 35 millimeter offers a little bit of a tighter field of view compared to 28 millimeters. Many photographers like to say that a 35 mil lens is kind of similar to your natural field of view. So when you look through a 35 mil viewfinder, whether it's on an EVF, an OVF or a rangefinder, you'll see something quite similar to your natural gaze. 35 millimeter lenses are abundantly available from pretty much every lens manufacturer, whether it's crop sensor, full frame or micro four thirds. As I mentioned, many 
photographers find 35 millimeter to be a natural extension of their own vision. So typically a lot of people stick to a 35 millimeter. Many people swear by a 28 millimeter. Many people commit to a 50 millimeter or an 85 millimeter. But a lot of people, especially within street photography, find 35 millimeter to be that perfect middle ground. One thing you'll notice once you go to 35 millimeter, which for me on this lens is 18 millimeter, one thing you'll notice is that it actually does crop the frame a little bit more from 28 and gives you a bit more of a focused field of view rather than seeing both left, right and center. Even though 28 millimeter isn't that wide when shooting video, like right now, I'm at 28 millimeter on this particular camera, but when I'm out on the street, I suddenly feel like I've got a fisheye lens on with just how much of the scene I can actually see. 35mm lenses are also often found on fixed lens camera systems for street photography, such as the Fujifilm X100 series and the Sony RX1 line. Moving much tighter now, this is 50 millimeter. What this shot is actually currently in. This is much tighter. I thought for this video, I was shooting 50 mil because of just how tight this is. On this particular lens I have here, this is a 25 millimeter. With our crop factor of two, that makes it a 50 millimeter. The full frame 50 millimeter field of view is the shortest focal length that people would typically consider a portrait lens. If you've already owned a few prime lenses in your lifetime, 50 millimeter is likely the first one that you purchased. Brands like Canon and Sony and others offer something commonly referred to as a nifty 50, that being a cheap plastic and affordable 50 mil lens with a 1.8 aperture. That 1.8 aperture is important here because this is one of the first focal lengths that people typically play with that allows them to play with depth of field and layering their subjects. Due to a 50mm narrower field of view, you might immediately find yourself trying to isolate your subjects. But hey, look, we had enough isolation. Don't isolate your subjects. Just because you're on a 50mm doesn't mean you need to blur out the background, doesn't mean you need to isolate your subjects. We can actually try and incorporate both our subjects and the wider context of a scene into our images. I find the 50 millimeter lens is probably the most important lens for you to actually play with your distance between yourself, the subject and the background. Now we reach the limit of our zoom lens. I'm going straight up to 85 millimeter. On this particular lens, this is a 42. So this would give us an 84 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view. Similar to the 50 millimeter focal length, this can give you a bit of a God complex. You start to see everything look nice and sharp. Whereas what we actually mean here is we can have blurry foreground, very blurry foreground, and a blurry background with our subject sharp in the middle. And our subject isn't any sharper than a wider lens. It's just because comparatively to the outer focus foreground and background, they look super sharp in comparison. I mentioned having a God complex here because it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking getting a subject in focus with a nice blurry background is a good photo. And here you can easily lean on the characteristics of your focal length rather than actually trying to create interesting shots. Whichever of the focal lengths you enjoy most from this video, drop those in the comments down below. And if you want to see a full review on the GX7 and this 14-42 to lens, I have a full review on this camera right here.